Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I... I'm just checking in on you. How you doing? <laughs> sorry, it's like 8.15 in the morning. My wife's going to fucking kill me. I'm sorry, it's 8.39. Oh, all right, it's on the other side of 8.30. You know, let's take those construction rules. You can't hammer a nail until 7 a.m. I can't yell, I'm just checking in on you until uh, after 8.30 in the morning. That's the deal that we have. All right. Um, what's going on? How, how is your, your, um, your in between Christmas and New Year's? Do you guys get the time off? You know, I know the kids do. Kids on break, you know, just in time to fucking run into that chick from high school. You always try to bang, give it a shot. Right? Everybody else, did you have to go to work on the 26th or the 27th? You're right there. You're right back. It's the fucking worst. Everybody should be off. You shouldn't even be able to buy food this time of year. Everything is fucking closed. Everybody just sit down, fucking relax. You know, take a week for yourselves. We, this fucking country, man, we got to be more like Europe. I don't know how they do it over there with their fucking... Goddamn skinny jeans, you know? Their fucking legs are as skinny as their arms over there in those tall people countries, you know, the Scandinavian countries. You know, down in the Mediterranean. These motherfuckers, they get like six weeks vacation a year. It's fucking incredible. Why don't we do that? Huh? President-to-be Donald Trump? You want to make this country great? You can make this country what it never fucking had. Six weeks of vacation. You know fucking... Ah, uh, that would be great. Well, how great would that be? Every two months, you just get a week off, right? Then you work for seven, lucky seven. You work for seven fucking weeks, then you get a week off and just sit there and fucking chill out and start, you know, let all the stress of your job go, fucking start over. Everybody is off at the same time. Cops, pilots, you know, people who watch the nuclear fucking facilities, you just, you know, it's not going to, nothing's going to happen, right? What's this, the Simpsons? It's, you're fine. Everybody just chill. If you're in a war, that's it. Every fucking seven weeks, boom, right? Seven weeks, you try to kill each other. And then, you know, right when it hits the eighth week, somebody stands up out of their trench. Silent night. Holy night, all is calm. Right? You just fucking chill up. This is this is basically the deal. I am um, really trying to. Uh, I think I'm gonna fucking talk to somebody. I gotta fucking get my temper under control because I don't want to be an angry dad. Uh, I want to break the cycle. <laughs> um, so somebody told me yesterday. They go, well, why don't you try med- meditation? And I go, get the fuck out of here. That works. And the person was like, yeah, I do it twice a day for 20 minutes. And uh, like, I'm going to have the time to do that when I have a fucking kid. Uh, twice a day for 20 minutes. And um, he said, like, if you just meditate, shut your brain off, your body just starts getting rid of stress. And I asked him, I said, this has made you less angry? He said, much less angry. So I'm going to give that a shot, and I'm going to talk to somebody. You know, I've been cleaning up all my shit, trying to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And I found this empty notebook, and I was like, all right, this is going to be like my fucking angry journal, you know? <laughs> Figure out. Oh, my God. Yesterday, I, I, the, you know, the amount of shit that I just, I just completely, I go from zero to 9,000 fucking degrees. Um. You know, yesterday I pulled up and there was some guy fucking parked in, in you know, the top of my driveway because yet another thing was fucked up with my house. Did I tell you guys the awning fucking broke? It's, it's just, it just never fucking ends. It just never, this fucking house, it never ends. I just find myself, I feel like I'm, I'm running in a giant circle that I'm, once I get everything fucking fixed, you know, 360 degrees, rotisserie fucking, uh, <laughs> Um, whatever the fuck rebuild of this fucking house the second i do the last thing 
the first thing I fixed is going to break and it's just going to start all over again. So, um, anyways, I'm going to try to do that. And, um, you know, it's fucking hilarious is like when I actually am calm and I am relaxed, it actually makes my wife nervous in a like, not like nervous, like she's afraid I'm going to do something. She's just like, she's like, are you, uh, everything okay with you? Uh, what's, what's going on with you? And it's just like, nothing. I'm just quiet and relaxing. She's just, yeah. Are you okay? (laughs) So, um, I got to dial it way the fuck down. You know, I think my average energy, you you ever play like pick up whatever sport and there's always that person taking it way too seriously. And before the game even starts, they skate up next to you or they stand next to you, post up or whatever. You can just feel their fucking energy and you're just like, oh God, not this fucking guy. I, I hate to admit it, but I think I'm that guy, except I'm not playing a sport. I'm just fucking walking around my house. Um, I don't know what the fuck it is, but uh, I have to work on that shit. So um, as I've been mentioning to you guys, I've been getting rid of a ton of shit, um, you know, selling stuff, having a buddy of mine sell it on Craigslist, trying to take as little as I can to Goodwill, because I really believe that they just fill that fucking truck up with 90% of the shit and just throw it in the ocean. So I'm actually trying to sell it to people. Um, Just the sheer amount of shit that people bring down to Goodwill. (coughs) Like, people use Goodwill. You know what I mean? Without ever addressing their fucking consumerism, and I did it too, like how much shit I bought and just how every time you leave the house, you come home with something else in a bag, and then it's just in your fucking house. Like when me and Nia first moved in, we had two people in a fucking house. I mean, it was like echo, echo. And all of a sudden, five years later, it's fucking filled up. I'm like, what, what happened? How did we become these people? So who are these people? So um, I'm, I'm getting rid of like all of this clutter. Uh, you know, like I have every fucking laptop just about that I've ever fucking had. I, I've always kept them because I don't know, like I always hear that, you know, they end up in junkyards and something leaks out of them. And I'm like, well, why don't I just leave it in my fucking closet? It's not hurting anything. It's just sitting there. And then I got two in there. Then I got three. Then I got four. So uh, I'm going to try to find a place that recycles them responsibly. Um, so anyways, throughout all of this, people go, you got to check out this documentary. These guys, the minimalists. And um, I started to watch it the other night. And uh, I'm totally on board. It's what I want. And I'm watching it with Nia. And it's fucking hilarious. As I can feel her getting annoyed. And I'm like, Nia, are you watching this and shit? She goes, yeah. She goes, you know, I don't, you know, I like my stuff. Blah, 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 blah. And I kept poking at her to see what the deal was. And she's finally just like, yeah, I just don't give a shit about a bunch of white people that are all excited that they're now living with like absolutely nothing. You know, they, they, you know, if they fucking... How the fuck did she put it? She goes, there's a lot of people living like that. Not out of, it wasn't a choice, right? And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. We're going to go down that fucking route. We actually had a great conversation. I was like, you know what? There's a certain kind of white person that fucking annoys the shit out of you. She goes, no, there is. I go, yeah, there is. It's the white person that is not happy in life and is trying to, to, to figure out what true happiness is. Because the stereotype of a white person is that they just show up and all their dreams come true. All right. These are just a group of people that were living a way, certain way. It wasn't making them happy. They tried something new. It made them happy and they just want to share it with you. And this is why my wife's a shit. She goes, all right, now that you put it that way. Okay, fair enough. I was being judgmental, but blah, blah, blah. We came, we came to a good place, but it was fucking, she went, I wish you guys could have heard. She went on one of her fucking epic rants. I was dying laughing because I, I heard the element of truth in it, but, um, I don't know. There is all of that shit, though. There is that that fucking thing how every group of people is, like, defined, you know, by a negative. And, uh, you know, I guess with white people is that, you know, we have yachts and we're raised by the maid who's not white. And uh, whatever we want, we get. And then we screw it up. And then our parents come in and save us because they know the judge you know, and that's definitely, that's an option as a white person, but that's, you know, you're really slicing off the top of the ham there. (laughs) 
anyways, um, so this is going to be the new me. You know, let's see how long. Who the fuck's kidding who? Let's see how long I can sustain this. Okay, because the reality is, is you are who the fuck you are. And I am a wound up son of a bitch. And um, I'm going to try to unwind as much as I can for as long as I can uh, before I go back into that deep groove that I've worn into how my brain is functioned. Uh, I'm going to try to fucking meditate. I'm going to get rid of all of this fucking shit that I have accumulated. Um, you know, for years already, I've gone to like comedy events and stuff and they're always giving you like this gift bag of it's, and it's just shit. It just, you know, I don't know what the, fu- I don't half the shit. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Little things of jelly beans with the fucking festival's name on it. Some toiletries, some travel bag shit, you know, all in a little bag that has the logo, the thing on it. And you're like, I got to keep this, you know, part of my scrapbook that I don't fucking have. And I just, what I started to do is I just say no. I say no. And then if it gets weird and they have this vibe of like, hey, I'm trying to give you a gift here and you're turning it down. I kind of feel, uh, you know, insulted me a little bit kind of insulted me a little bit here i will take the bag and then what i do is i come home and then i just i give it to somebody hey you know i just said this day i take you sure you don't want it yeah yeah take it take it get it the fuck out of here you know and what's funny too is actually now when you go out and you try and sell your shit you realize how little fucking value it has you know what i mean um i don't know and I should tell you, when as I sell this shit, I have an element of guilt. And I always think of that movie, What About Bob? When that therapist passed Bob on to Richard Dreyfus. That's what I feel like I'm doing with my stuff, is I'm selling it to these people. I'm just looking at them as they buy it. I'm like, you're not going to fucking use that. <laughs> <laughs> Your problem now, buddy. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, that's what I've been... Uh, that's what I'm doing. I got to... Uh, I have to chill way the fuck out. Um, for the next 18 to 22 years, evidently. And uh, so I imagine I'll get some tweets. Don't you think that's going to hurt your comedy? No, I don't. I've been fucking up my life for almost half a century. I have plenty to draw on. And just the fact of someone being as wound up as me trying to walk around and act like, you know, wearing a sweater and laughing at small talk is going to do it for me. Right, right there. There'll be something in that, right? Or maybe you weren't thinking that. Maybe that's what I'm worried about. I'm saying that you're saying it so I don't look like I'm, I'm, I'm fucking weak on some level. Um, so anyways. All right. Jesus Christ. I've just been fucking babbling like some chick on one of these fucking shows. Well, Bill, maybe you got a little fucking reality chick in you. You ever think of that? <clears throat> Will this fucking goddamn cough ever go away? I'm sorry. Let's do that again. You know, I find it really irritating that I uh, took some medication for a cough. A long time ago, about a month ago, and I haven't, I'm not smoking cigars, I'm getting a good night's sleep, and I just, for some reason, you know what it is, is my wife um, is so pregnant right now that she doesn't remotely get cold. So, the fucking heat has been off in the house all day. I, I, I walk around with like a sweatshirt on. I just look at it, I go, you're not cold at all? Like, my feet are fucking free. Like, we literally in the house, it's like a log cabin. There's, like, no no heat on whatsoever. You can hear it now. I got her on the background because she's fucking upstairs, right? Um, but, like, you know, I got this old house, and they got these cool fucking old windows, and I don't want to get rid of them because they don't make them like that anymore, but the wind just fucking passes through. Oh, the wind just goes right through my fucking house. I swear to Christ, it's unbelievable. Only thing missing is just like leaves just blowing by when I'm in the fucking living room. So I'm always cranking up the fucking heat. She starts looking like she's under like 20 blankets. So I have to, you know what the deal is. As a guy, you're, you're going to fucking lose. You're fucking lose. Why do I keep trying to turn on my computer like, like I actually have internet connections down here? Um, all right, let's get to the point where I got to read some of these. Uh, some of these fucking reads here. I got a doctor's appointment with my wife today. Stupid fucking things you got to go to as a guy. I want you to be there. No one's going to fucking, no one's going to talk to you at all, but, uh, you know, we still need you to be here. 
because I haven't been to like the last two. They weren't important ones. You know, they were just sort of check up things. And like she's going, everybody's saying, where's your husband? Where's your husband? We miss not talking to him when he's here. <laughs> All right, let's do some reads here. Wink. Uh, Wink, W-I-N-C, as in cunt. Finding great new wine is tough. That's why I've been telling you all about our sponsor, uh, Club W. Club W, looking for weapons of mass destruction. And how they make it so easy to get wine personalized to your palate and delivered right to your door. And here's a little update for you. Club W, daddy loved me best, is now called Wink, spelt W-I-N-C, as in cunt. A new name and an improved look. But here's the important thing. It's still the same amazing wine company introducing you to new wines you'll love. Wink, W-I-N-C is in cock, works directly with winemakers and growers from all over the world to create delicious wines and deliver it right to your door, you fucking drunk. Wink's 100% satisfaction guarantee means if you don't like a bottle they send you, they'll replace it with a bottle you love, no questions asked. Well, there you go, you cheap fucks. Suck the thing down and be like, eh, I didn't really like it. Then you get another one. That's the old twofer. Uh, you just don't, uh, you don't just get random bottles. Wink, W-I-N-C is in cocksucker. Is personalized wine membership that reminds wines, sp- that recommends wine specifically f- for you based on the results of your palate profile quiz. It's some big brother shit. You can also wrote, you can also rate all of the wine you receive from Wink, so they'll learn about you with every order and constantly personalize wine they send. Sign up for Wink right now. W-I-N-C is clitoris right now and gain immediate. It's so childish, Bill. Why do you keep doing it? You know what? Because it's funny and it's making you listen to the whole fucking ad, isn't it? Immediate insiders, uh, to gain immediate insider access to the best fine wine from all around the world. Oh my God, this Zinfandel is delicious. Find out for yourself why yours truly and thousands of other satisfied wine lovers are raving about Wink. I'm not ra- I'm reading the copy. I don't drink wine. It gives me a brutal fucking hangover. The best part, I, you know what? If I have a nice meal, you know, with nice something from fucking Blue Apron, maybe I'll have a glass of wine, right? If Nia has one of her fucking friends over, everybody's sitting around, they got the fire going, you know? You always feel like you're in the big chill when your wife has friends over. The best part, Wink is over is offering my listeners $20 off right now when you go to trywink.com slash burr. They'll even cover the shipping. Think about it. Are you done thinking? You'll get fine wine personalized to your palate. We get it. Delivered right to your fucking door. You just said this shit. Try Wink. W-I-N-C. As in cynical. That's not how you spell cynical, is it? Isn't that with an S? Oh, S and C. When are you guys going to just fucking combine? You know, like... Like one of those Dunkin' Donuts Pizza Hut things. Uh, try Wink and get twenty dollars off. Complimentary shipping right now when you try. Uh, when you go to trywink.com slash burr. That's W I N C is in cunt dot com slash burr. Oh, Blue Apron, everybody! <clears throat> you know, not all ingredients are created equal. Oh Jesus! It's just like the Ku Klux Klan's fucking food thing. Fresh, high-quality, what ingredients, <laughs> they didn't say that, make a real difference. So it's important to know where your food comes from. Why do fucking really race people say, what? What, people? H-W-I-T-E. At genuine, what gold? Talk about your personal experience. Fuck you. Affordable, for less than $10 per person per meal. Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes Would you like some pumpkin pie with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals? Variety. Choose from a variety of new recipes each week or let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Recipes are not repeated within a year, so you're never going to get bored. Flexible. Customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Blue Apron has several delivery options, so you can choose what fits your needs, and there's no weekly commitment, so you only get... This what... So you only get deliveries when you want them. I'm going to do how they sing in my church. Easy. Each meal comes with step-by-step easy follow recipe. Card pre-portioned ingredients and prepared in 40 minutes or less. Guaranteed Blue Apron's freshness. Guaranteed promises. 
that every ingredient in your delivery already ready to cook or they'll make it right. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash burr. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash burr. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. You know what? That's a great way to get in shape, too. You know? <clears throat> Easy to cook meals. You come home, you fucking put it together before you do something dumb. You know, like order a pizza, then have some ice cream, right? And then spoon with a fat guy, you know? And his fatness just fucking, you know. You ever done the ever spoon with a fat guy? It just makes you fatter. That's a true story. Um, all right, where the fuck am I in this podcast? 20 fucking minutes in. You know something? Some days it doesn't feel like work, and other days it does. This is one of these days. Um, what do you think Obama's thinking right now? I always think like this time of year, this time like when a president is in their second term, it's fucking December, okay? You got another couple of weeks before the next fucking poor bastard comes in there, you know? And I do mean bastard because it's always going to be a butt. It's always going to be a guy, ladies. It's always going to be a guy. All right? That job is for a man. There's certain things that men can't do, and there's certain things that women can't do. And women can do a bunch of things, but running the country is, is just not one of those things. How many people are gonna, just going to take that clip and take all the fucking, you know, I'm just fucking around of it out of there. Is he saying that women shouldn't be better? Um, hey, what do you call those YouTube fucking stars? Those fucking cunts, you know, like when like that guy punched the kangaroo in the face and you want to see it and you go to click on it. And then this is just this fucking high energy 20 something douche with the Janet Jackson fucking microphone. Can I take your order, please? Going, okay, guys, so you're not going to believe this, okay? So this kangaroo, okay? We're all familiar with the kangaroo. And then they cut to some shit about kangaroos and they just take this fucking, this fucking clip. It's, it's like, it's like, dude, I don't fucking need you. I know what's going to happen. Just show me the original clip. And these fucking cunts insert themselves into it. And then they, they're making like 250 grand a goddamn fucking video or some shit. You know, they're like the DJs of YouTube. You know, way do 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 the same fucking thing. They're doing that. They're fucking remixing this shit. They're taking other people's stuff. I don't even know what DJing is. I have no fucking idea. I don't even know why I make fun of it. Well, yeah, you do, Bill, because you got a fucking half hour to fill up here. Um... Anyway, so did I mention I was, I've been I'm trying to do the impossible? I can't remember if I already talked about this. I'm trying to watch like every Bruin game and every Celtic game this year. Because <laughs> you got to choose. You're either a basketball guy or a hockey guy. And I've been trying to watch. The other night I watched a Bruins game and then a, then a fucking Celtic game. I watched the, um, I don't even know if I already talked about this because I, I fucked up the podcast and had to start it again. I don't give a shit. I watched the Bruins lose 4-3 to three to the Blue Jackets. And then I watched the Celtics after that beat the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. I believe I already talked about this. I have no idea. All I know is the fucking NFL playoffs are coming up. Does anything, repeat, anything go by faster than the fucking NFL regular season? You know what goes by faster? My fucking train of thought. I was talking about presidents this time of year. You know how fucking psyched I would be? After eight fucking years of being president, the stress of that, the fucking stress of that, all the bodies, all the people that died because of the decisions that you made, it's fucking inevitable, okay? Because you answer, you answer to the, the, the reptilian people at the top, you know? And I don't mean shapeshifters. I just mean people who do not give a fuck about anything but themselves and their money and power. That's all they care about. They don't care who suffers. They don't give a shit. They don't believe in God. They believe that they're a God or they believe that God is fucking, you know, bestowed them with this great responsibility to run the fucking world, to try to take over it or whatever, right? <clears throat> I always just think like, as much as Obama doesn't want to see Trump, 
he has to be so fucking psyched, you know? Like, if I was a bomber right now, I would just be like, dude, I'm getting all the fucking sports packages. I'm getting myself a pair of silk fucking pajamas, you know, with sheepskin fucking slippers. And I'm not doing shit. I am not going to do, but they have to do shit. You know why? Because the president only makes 500 grand a fucking year. So now what he has to do is now for the rest of his fucking life, he has to go out and give these speeches, okay, which, you know, to the people that put him in office. They pay him like six fucking figures to get out there and tell his fucking jokes and do his little song and dance. And the reality is, is they're just washing their fucking bribe money, you know, so he would push through all the shit that they wanted or as much of it as they could while he was in office. And then they also get to see like, yeah, see, we own this guy, you know, as they're bringing new lizards into their fucking den to be like, see this? We actually have former presidents come here and do a little song and dance for us. You know why? Because we own this fucking guy. We owned him before he even fucking went in there. We own the fucking next guy. You know, that's probably why, you know, as much as the upper 1% probably did not want to see Donald Trump get in there because he's this fucking rogue guy. And all you fucking progressive lefties go, oh, my God, shut the fuck up. Um, They're actually going to end up loving that guy because it seems what he wants to do is deregulate everything because guys at his level of wealth, they're so fucking rich, they find the government annoying. (laughs) i have to answer to who who's at the door the u.s government uh these fucking assholes they open the door what 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 now oh you know we just uh you know kind of appreciate it if uh that's the way the u.s government talks to that level of wealth because they need them to get into fucking office right you know kind of appreciate it if uh you know you wouldn't build that golf course uh over that homeless shelter and those Native Americans, you know? I t- you know what? I don't, I'll think about it. I'll think about it, all right? Just fucking go fuck yourself. I do what I want. I'm making money off opiates. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but you know what? I'm in fucking limbo. Right now is where I am. Um, I haven't been doing stand-up. I can't go out. I can't really leave the house. I'm afraid to fucking leave the house because, you know, I, I stay within like a certain fucking radius. So if my wife does not have our kid uh, by January 2nd, I am going to the Rose Bowl and I am going to do the unspeakable at there. I am going to be sober as a church mouse. I won't even smoke a cigar because I have to let those fucking things go because I have to get life insurance. And uh, I don't want to pay the, I'm a smoker. And I don't want to be a smoker. You know what? I'll fucking smoke like th- four a year. That's what I think. Oh, well, I enjoy the fucking shit out of those. Um, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm getting to that point in my life. I'm getting my affairs in order. You know? It's actually, it's a, you know what? I've actually found going through the whole process of getting life insurance and putting together a trust and a will and all of that shit, I've actually found that to be just as enjoyable as getting rid of all this shit in my life, all the clutter. It's the same thing. Like, this, you know, as a guy, I think there's something like how we just don't deal with our mortality. And uh, so you don't want to think about it. But I got to tell you, once you're just like, you're thinking like, yeah, okay. And something happens to me, you get this, you get that, and I'm fucking out, right? And nobody is, you know... Nobody has to worry about anything. And then they can all be like, you know what? That son of a bitch. I don't know what he was doing uh, swimming with those sharks. But uh, I got to tell you, you say one thing about that guy. You know, he had his affairs in order. You got to be that guy. If you have any sort of wife, children, anything, you got you to get your fucking affairs in order. And um, I haven't done it like a lot of my friends didn't. And none of them had their affairs in order. And a number of them died. And uh, that is just a fucking thing. I'm telling you right now, you do not want to put your fucking family through that. And I'm not going to be that guy. So hopefully I won't die before uh, I get everything all fucking straightened out here. But that is my that's my first thing I'm going to do in the <laughs> in, in 2017. I'm going to prepare my affairs. My affairs will be in order. Oh, God, that's going to be so weird. You know what's so weird about getting life insurance is you then give your partner motive, you know? 
My wife doesn't have fucking life insurance. She doesn't even think about it. They don't give a fuck about us, right? And you know what? I don't want her to have life insurance, you know? Because then I got to deal with the cops if something came out. Well, didn't you make fucking uh, six figures when she fell down that flight of stairs? I swear to God, I was by myself. I was playing drums in a rehearsal space. You know, I spend so much time alone every day that I would never have a fucking alibi. God forbid if something ever happened. Can anybody... uh, can anybody vouch for you that that's where you were at? And then I would have to go in my head. Who did I yell at on the way there or the way back in a fucking car? Did I get their license plate so I can call them up and say, do you remember that bald, red bearded asshole who screamed at you? You know, yeah. You remember that? You can, do you remember what time of day that was? This is really critical for me. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very bizarre thing to go out and uh, to, it's, it's, it's a, makes you feel at peace. And then also, you know, it makes you, you know, when your wife, you know, brings over you like some food, you're kind of looking at her. Then you're looking at the food, you know, she gets up, you switch plates. <laughs> I think I've watched too many of those first 48s. You know what I mean? I love those guys where they, they fucking, their first two wives die mysteriously and then someone else fucking marries them. It's just like, this is the fucking thing. You can marry somebody who had one person die. Okay, that happens. Unfortunately, that fucking happens. But once they're, they're, they're at two, get the fuck away from that person. What are the, what are the fucking odds you know, you got married and both your husbands died. You married twice. They, I'm, a, I'm a two-time widower. Yeah, well, you're not going to be a three-time. The fuck away from me. Check, please. Right? Use that hacky fucking out to every comedy scene. I'll, just, I'll have what she's having. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you got to get the fuck out of there. You know, you can only have one spouse die. And after that, if I was running shit, if I was one of the lizard people and I was running shit... This would be the rule. Anybody who had two spouses die, and you know we can't prove that you fucking did it. You are only allowed to date other people that had that uh, that are, are already had two people die. Okay, and then you know whoever dies in that, who gives a shit? Because then you just got rid of one murder and psycho, and then you just keep having them date each other, and eventually then there's only one, and then you stick that person in a giant like human like parakeet cage. And like, this, there he is, there's the winner, or there she is, right? All 48 of her husbands died mysteriously. You can never prove it, you know? Take her down, put her on Coney Island. Does that still exist, that fucking roller coaster? You ever go to Coney Island go on that, on that fucking roller coaster? It's one of the scariest fucking rides I've ever been on. Not because it's, it's like a scary ride, it's because the ride is so fucking old. And there's no padding in this seat. I swear to God, I got off that ride. I felt like I was in a fucking three-car accident. You know, my fucking back was killing me. My shoulder was fucked up. Um, I don't know. You know what? I'm probably fucking up my life right now because I'm, I'm trying to do too many things at once, as I always do. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do yoga. I'm going to fucking uh, stop yelling. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to therapy. I'm blah, 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 blah. I think I'm freaking out because I'm a fucking... Uh, volatile fucking lunatic and I, I don't want uh, I don't want to be that person you know you know what I want to be I want to be like fucking Joe Pesci in Casino you know minus watching my brother getting beaten to death in a cornfield like not that part the part where he's making pancakes for his kid you know despite the fact he squeezed somebody's eyeball out in a vice like 20 minutes earlier and then he could come home and he could shut it off it was very inspirational like hey yeah, you want some more syrup I, you know I love you right kisses him on the head you know and that's it then he goes out and he fucking kneecaps somebody, you know, 20 seconds after the bus drives away with his kid. That's who I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That's it. Uh, that's the podcast. Um, and I got to admit, you know, it's been hard for me to watch uh, the Bruins this year, man. So I'm, I'm, I've actually been watching more NBA hoop, which I'm really fucking embarrassed to say because I've always been a hockey guy. But... You know, I'll, I will always be a hockey guy, but I, it's also I can't ignore watching what Danny Ainge is doing. It's fucking great. There's so much fun to watch. Um, 
So, you know what? Let's look up here. Who do we got next? I don't know who the Celtics have next, but... Do you guys hear Aaron Kaufman is leaving fucking Gas Monkey fast, fast and loud? It's fucking brutal. But the way uh, Discovery talked about it, it sounded like he was going to get his own show, but it's just like, what the fuck? I don't want to see that. I don't want to see this spinoff. You know? Well, Laverne and Shirley were on Happy Days. That was one of, the, one of the best times ever. Then they got their own show. It wasn't as good. It's like when a super group breaks up and then the lead singer does their thing and then the other band gets a new... It's like Van Halen. David Lee Roth was never better than when he was in Van Halen. Van Halen was never better than when David Lee Roth was there. You know what I mean? Sammy Hagar was better when he was by himself. What are you talking about, Bill? I don't know. Just fucking talking. You know, I'm just listening. All right. Bruins, who do we got next? Da, 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 do, do, do. Oh, we got a home and home against the fucking Buffalo Sabres. I never understood that home and home. It's a home and an away. Who's this fucking Hitler youth that they got? Number 55 on defense. Ristolanian? Ristolanian? Jesus Christ, tell me his grandfather doesn't live down in fucking South America. <laughs> Oh, that's an old Nazi fucking hunter joke. All right, we're going to end on that. Um, that's the podcast for this week. Uh, um, just check it in on you. That's all the fuck it was.